Ja, dat is het verhaal van de bodem. Vandaag hier in Utrecht waar ik Elena en Hans ga treffen. En we gaan natuurlijk de bodem in. We gaan kijken naar hun onderzoek en we gaan eigenlijk kijken naar onzichtbare archeologie. Wat kun je nou niet vinden als je gewoon graaft, maar wel als je iets dieper graaft. Dat dus. Elena, waar zijn we en waarom is het zo koud? We zijn at Utrecht University's core storage. And there are cores in here from all around the world, and it's so cold because we need to keep them in an environment where they're preserved. Um, yeah, welcome to the freezer. It's about four degrees centigrade. Uh, these are, you say, these are cores? Yeah. These, this, this is, these are soil samples, or what, what are in all, all these bags? Yep, so in each of these bags, there are, there's half of a core. So when we get them, they're together like this, and then we slice them in half, and we have all of these halves of cores and then we sample them um, to find out about environmental data. Why do you slice them? Why do you cut them to the middle? So we can see them. I'll show you in a minute. Please do yeah. show me. Here's one uh, we sliced earlier. Uh, what is it that you see from this? So this core is from under Isselmere um, and this was a, a river system and there were levees on the sides of these river systems and they were continuously being deposited with sediment. Um, so that's what we see here is all this deposition of sediment from the river. And then we wanted to know were there people living on these levees. So we took a big chunk out of this, um, like a block sample, that's what we call them. And we sliced it in half, put it on a thin section on some glass and that's what we're going to look at under the microscope. So that's what we've done to a bunch of these cores down here. Um, and I also did something called loss on ignition. That's all these little, uh, these little chunks taken out. Yeah. And that measures the organic content. So we were trying to see if there was vegetation growing next to these rivers. What we see here is like history. Yeah. I mean, we see back into the, in, into, the, into the past for a long time. Is, is, uh, do you know how, how long this is, historically spoken? Well, it's probably maybe a thousand years at most. But this was being deposited really quickly because it was next to a river that was flooding and flooding and flooding. So, yeah, it was, it, this is a pretty small chunk of time for a core. Sometimes you get a core like this and it's like thousands and thousands of years. And this is like now and this is like thousands of years ago or am I exactly the wrong way around? Uh, this is like 7,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago. And now is many meters up. So this is only one meter of a core that's like nine meters long. I see. So you, you take nine or 10 meters out of the yeah. soil? Yeah. And then bring it here? Yeah. Put it in cold storage, slice it in half? Yep. And then you start your studies? Exactly. It's incredible. We now have this sample. We're going to study it. Where, 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 where is that? What, what are we going to do? We're going to go up to the microscope. Where it's not cold. Where it's not cold. Correct. Let's do that. <laughs> we go study. All right. Elena is now doing the work behind the microscope. I'm joined by Hans. Uh, Hans, uh, um, we are here behind the microscope looking at, looking at soil. What is it that we are uh, researching? What is it that we are looking at? Well, what we're looking at is, in fact, some of the soil that you've just seen in the core. Yeah. And, well, it, it has gone through a process. So the samples that we took have first been made into a block yeah. of plastic. It smells a bit and it, yeah. it's hard. And then from this block, a very thin slice was taken and polished. And, there's, uh, and then it starts to look like these things. So you have these glass plates with a 30 micron thick slice of soil yeah. on it. And that we can study under the microscope. And Elena, what is it that you are looking at now or that you can find from these samples? Well, what we're looking at right now is a coprolite. So a piece of human or dog poop. We are looking at poop. Yes. I, I came all the way to Utrecht yes. to we, look at poop. Yeah, we find literal shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> this is what you do all day like. <laughs> I spent all day taking pictures of this piece of poop. <laughs> okay, that's fine, <laughs> as long as they pay you. Uh, what can we, in this case, I mean, what can, we, what can we learn from the shit? Well, in this case, it's a pretty big deal that we found some shit because it 
gives us evidence that this land that we were looking at is dry enough for either humans or animals to be walking on, to be farming, um, to be living on. So it's a pretty big deal that we found some evidence that people were here. Because if there's people or animals, they, they leave, they leave they, poop. Yep. Yeah. Where are we? Where was this found? Where is this from? We are halfway Enkhuizen and Urk, under the yeah. bottom of the IJsselmeer. We said IJsselmeer, that's all water. Yeah. But we're talking about a time that this was land. Yes. We're talking about the time that the sea level was much lower. So four or five meters lower than today. And at that time there was an area with uh, small river systems, with people living on the banks of the rivers. And what we also do, we look at the structure, and the structure does not look like a normal soil. The structure looks like it's been worked, or, or people have been digging in it. So that is what we all find, well, very interesting and completely unexpected. If you see a sample like this, because you have, of course, hundreds like those, can you then very fast see, let's say, that there was people there, what they have been doing, or, or, or when they were living there, what, what can you all take from this soil sample? Yeah, so like Hans said, it's if there are pieces of anthropogenic stuff, so like pottery and poop, and there's soil that's been mixed together in a way that plants and animals wouldn't do, um, then that's something you can't see by just looking at the core. So when you put it under the microscope, there's all of this stuff, this microscopic stuff that comes out that otherwise we would be totally blind to. So we know now... IJsselmeer wasn't IJsselmeer, there were rivers, riverbanks, there were people living there. We know more or less what they were doing. We Maybe it's too much detail, but we had a project that other people executed where they looked, so there's been excavations where they found a lot of turds, and they've been looking at what's inside. So this is, so these are turds from one of the archaeological sites in... Uh, oh, in these are actual turds? Actual turds, some from men, from people, some from dogs, and, and they look what's inside, and there's fish bones. There's be you can see what people have been eating, and you could see their health. That's incredible. That's really incredible.